Hello and welcome to another episode of Humans in Five. We can all have a bit of a laugh in films and books when scientists use lasers and big shiny looking machines for pretty much anything, especially because we don't do a whole lot of that in our field. Well, you might be surprised. We've talked about before about how some cool gadgets and equipment can help us collect surface data or see right through bones and objects. But this piece of equipment really takes the cake when it comes to big shiny machines and shooting light through objects. We are, of course, talking about a sinker. A synchrotron is essentially a super powerful source of x-rays. X-rays are high energy electromagnetic radiation that, in the case of the synchrotron, can be used to look inside objects or organisms, just like those you would use in a hospital to look at someone's bones. The synchrotron works on a simple basis. Energy and matter is made out of subatomic particles. These are smaller than atoms, which are the basic units of chemical elements, and come in a range of types, including electrons. When an electron changes direction, it emits energy. When the electron is moving fast enough, the energy it emits is an X-ray wavelength. First, an electron gun runs high voltage electricity through a heated conductor. Second, a nearby screen is given a short positive charge, which pulls the electrons away from the conductor towards a linear accelerator. Third, that linear accelerator produces pulses of electrons in different lengths of time, on the scale of nanoseconds, which accumulate in a storage ring. Think of it as adding material to a storage area before it's full enough to use. Fourth, the x-rays emitted by the moving electrons are directed towards beam lines that surround that storage ring. Each beam line is designed for a different technique or type of research. As you can imagine, these are massive, complex, and really expensive machines. There are currently 60 synchrotrons in the world today. Some are a little different to the others in size and the type of applications they're used in. There's the one that I visited in Canada, known as the Canadian Light Source. It's associated with the University of Saskatchewan, and the building is about the size of a football field. So, what exactly can it do for researchers? Lots of people working in physics and engineering have found loads of uses for the synchrotron, but the X-rays are also very useful for researchers who work in archaeology, biology, zoology, and medicine. For example, Dr. Isaac Pratt and his colleagues from the University of Saskatchewan used the Canadian Light Source to look at the porosity of cortical bone, that outermost layer of the bone structure in rat forelimbs. They compared their results with micro CT scanning images of the same parts of living rats and demonstrated that combining these two methods enhanced that view of cortical bone, providing more options for scanning bones. Other researchers have looked at how the synchrotron can help visualize microscopic elements of human bones and how this can link with DNA material. Dr. Jana Andronowski and her colleagues used the synchrotron to look at osteocytes, or bone cells, and specifically whether some soft tissue stays around the microscopic parts of the bone cell. This study demonstrated that it does, and that this might be why particular parts of the bone give up really high amounts of DNA when examined for genetic material. We hope today's episode has got you thinking about cool questions to investigate with big shiny machines, and we'll see you next time on Humans in 5. And don't forget to subscribe!